just figured I'd do a quick video on what I like to call the uh, four stages of goat poop. And I figure since I'm cleaning, what better way to kind of show examples and talk about uh, what the good and the bad of poop is. And then later on, I'll go through, um, if you ever have really bad poop, what the steps we've experienced on Oakwood Hill for uh, you to take into your farm if you ever have that experience. So everyone's very familiar with the standard pebble goat poop. If you're not familiar with it, let me grab a couple. And you see it's kind of like a kind of the steps. This is a healthy goat poop. So this means that everything is working properly, they're getting enough roughage to break everything down, and they're expelling it um, on the way out. The other two are very similar. One One is, I like to call them the honeycombs. So basically take your uh, little pebbles and put it into a cone and that's gonna be a cone. And then there's another one, which is just kind of a cow pie, iodine it fast. Um, and those are your two other ones I wanna talk about. So this is kind of what a, a cone one looks like. See how it's like formed, but it's not like normal. And then this one is just kind of like a cow pie. The difference between the two is that basically the cow pie comes first. What it means is that the goat is not getting enough roughage and that it's not, uh, basically the insides aren't working enough so they're expelling it before it can break down. This is something that's pretty common after you milk a goat. If you give it too much rolled barley in our case or any of the sweet grains or anything else that you guys treat your goats with, um, usually for the couple hours afterwards, they'll have the, um, it can be cow pie or it can be the honeycomb. The difference between the cow pie and the honeycomb is that the cow pie means that it's basically um, the first step. It hasn't had much to break it down at all. And that um, the honeycomb means that they found some roughage and they're starting to break it down. And that the next step after the honeycomb will be the normal pebbles. In a very severe case, which obviously I don't have anything to offer right now, is you have diarrhea in goats. Diarrhea in goats um, is not good. Uh, sometimes it can be as simple as they got into something and they're trying to pass it or it could be something as serious as like they're dying. So um, this is just a quick down and dirty video to kind of show you the four different things of poop to look out for and then um, obviously diarrhea is a, a 911 call but there are ways to kind of get it going before your vet can get out to you. So um, hope this kind of helps you guys out and lets you rest assured if you ever have that kind of honeycomb or that cow pie. Just keep a look on it, but nine times out of 10, it's gonna be from your milky mamas that are getting too many treats on the sand and that by the next day or a couple hours, they'll have enough hay and grass and roughage and they'll be back to normal, okay? Okay, so I wanted to give a quick rundown of what we did when one of our goats got uh, extremely sick. Like I said, we don't know what it came from. Um, one of the mornings we just woke up and one of the mama uh, goats was deceased and then the other, three at the time had very excessive diarrhea. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through what we gave them and then you guys can kind of keep it in the back pocket. So if anything ever happens with you, then you'll have um, kind of like a an emergency kit. If I'm familiar with goats, you wanna, they, they have back teeth that they chew and then they have their little teeth, but there's a little indentation, basically an inch back that you can actually slide your fingers in and you won't get bit. If you get in the back or in the very front, you're gonna get bit. So word to the wise, be very careful. So Olga was very sick. Um, she had excessive diarrhea. She was laying around, she was lethargic. We had no, her and one other goat were kind of acting the same, one not as bad. Um, and then we had the other deceased one. So with Olga, we uh, immediately took into action these steps. So we gave her a full syringe. So I don't have the, the end of it on it, but you give one of these, a full thing of Nutrigen, Nutrigen, local feed store, tractor supply, any of those, you fill it up and you put it in, okay? Next, we'd give her eight activated charcoal tablets. So we would use the pill dispenser, which I did not bring over, but you fill up about two at a time, you shove it in, you shove it to the back of their throat. The idea with the activated charcoal is it's gonna take whatever toxin and build it up. So we would give her between six and eight, three times a day. The other thing we had on hand was vitamin B. This stuff, for whatever reason, is hard. We used to be able to get it at our local feed store. Now it's becoming kind of a, uh, I don't know if new regulations in California happen or something, but it's a lot harder to find. But we would give her 
a shot of vitamin B and it would be two of these. So this is three milliliters. We give them six milliliters of vitamin B. The last thing I want to show you is from our local feed store. So they're one time use, you pull them out, you can attach them and then you can throw this one away and that way you don't have to spend all the money eating the syringes. I, I've washed this in distilled hot water every time so it's, it's sanitized, okay? Then the last thing we did is we had a, one large syringe with a needle and then our sodium uh, chloride irrigation, it's essentially just saline water and we'd fill up one of these and then uh, put it in her skin. So you essentially what you do is you lift up the skin, you put the needle in and you put the water in, it's gonna put a little baseball on their shoulder, but what it's doing is keeping them hydrated. And then the last thing we did is we made sure that the water had goat electrolyte 24 seven. So if she was able to walk to the water, she was getting kind of a, um, a bump up in her electrolytes. We give this after they have their babies. Our goats for whatever reason don't like the warm molasses water so we give them warm goat electrolyte water right after they, they have their, their babies. Okay so with Olga we had all of these steps and then what we did is we did that three times a day for about three days kind of watched her and then um, at about the fourth day she was starting to fight when I put the activated charcoal in and she wasn't sitting as well and she started to eat. So we knew we were getting places, but it took her about a week and a half to kind of go full fledged eating and then about two weeks before we got pebbles back. Like I said, we have no idea what they got into and we were just fortunate with this case to, to catch it. But um, I wanted to show you guys kind of the setup that we have. So if anything ever were to happen and we see excessive diarrhea, this is our, this is our go-to. We give it to that. We let the vet know. Um, I actually didn't call the vet the last time this went down. We just went for it and tried it on our own and we were able to figure it out. Um, fun fact, or another thing to tell you is um, one of our goats the other day had mild diarrhea and we let her go the full day with no intervention. I watched her, she was eating and drinking water. So we kind of put our heads together and decided that it was from something she ate and that if she wasn't acting any worse the next day, we'd leave her alone. If she got worse, we would intervene with some nutrient drench, a vitamin B shot, and then uh, the saline. The activated charcoal is really, really helpful if you know there's a toxin in them. So we have these on hand all the time, um, but if a goat is fighting you, it's good news because they are feeling fine. So just remember to kind of have your little, uh, I like to call it an EMS kit and on hand. So if anything were to happen, you're ready to go and then you can give that goat the best fighting chance, okay? Anyways, guys, like I said, this is just a little tutorial on how we identify the four different strands of poop in our goat farm at Old Goat Hill. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll answer them and we'll go forward. All right, talk to you later.